Okay, so this part of the lesson, we're going to talk about the difference between an even function and an odd function. All you have to do is be able to tell the difference. That's it. An even function is symmetric to the y-axis. So there's two ways you can do this. It's graphically, you can just look at it and go, oh, I see the symmetry. Um, or if you don't have a graph or it'd be really difficult to draw one, then you can do it algebraically. So for an even function, if you plug in negative x, like if you plug opposite of x into the function, you will get back exactly what you started with. And that's due to the symmetry, like whatever's over here will reflect over here. So here's an example of a graph that would be an even function, your regular old uh, parabola parent function. Let me address a common misconception. People will be like, oh, well then every parabola must be an even function. That's not true. Why would that not be true? Like, can you think of a parabola that would not be? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, like if you shifted it left or right, do you see how that doesn't have that symmetry to the y-axis anymore? Okay, so not every single parabola, but if it's centered in the middle, then it will be. Odd function. Usually everyone's like, oh, that's symmetric to the x-axis. No, you can't have symmetry to the x-axis at all. Here's what symmetry to the x-axis would look like. That should bother you. You should be like, hey, hold on a second. Something is wrong with that. What's the matter? What is it? Yeah, go ahead. Nobody else raised their hand. So. Well, there's something wrong with this graph, period. Like, it's just like, it is sideways, yes. Good. It fails what test? What kind of a line did I just draw through it, guys? It'd be like bowling test. The vertical line test, do you remember this? That means it's not a what? It's not a function. You can't have symmetry to the x-axis or it wouldn't be a function, okay? So an odd function is symmetric to the origin. It's point symmetry. It's symmetry around a point. And it would look something like this, like the cubic function, the parent function around the origin, quadrant one gets like reflected down into quadrant three is basically what's happening there. It's going through the origin. So the difference between point symmetry and line symmetry, do you remember that from geometry a couple of years ago? Point symmetry versus line symmetry, All right? So the way that you can tell algebraically for an odd function, if you don't have a graph, it's the same test. If you plug in negative x, so you plug in opposite of x, if you get back the exact opposite of what you started with, and it's very convenient as far as the English language goes, odd, opposite, the odd ones, the opposite of what you started with. Coming with me there? Okay. So we're gonna try a couple of these algebraically. We're gonna try a couple of them from graphs. Make sure we all know what's going on. So the way that you test, you're going to plug in negative x. Everywhere there was an x, you're gonna put a negative x and give them all a hug put parentheses around everything that you plug in, okay? So everywhere there's an X, we're gonna plug in a negative X. Now the common mistake on these is, people will have like a preconceived notion, like, oh, I think it's gonna be even, or I think it's gonna be odd, and they'll try to force it to turn out one way. Don't do that. You're just testing. Just see what happens, and then you'll have your answer, okay? So when you do negative X squared, here's what that means. Squared means you have two of them. Is that going to be negative or positive? Good, why? Two negatives cancel out. Okay, so this term will become a positive x squared. And then what about this? Five times negative x. Perfect. Another common thing that happens, and I end up having to mark this wrong, don't write this on your paper, is people will write this and I know what they're trying to say, but I have to mark that wrong because it means five minus X. So please don't do that. All right, so that's what we got. Now you compare. The first term is the same. You see that? The second term is different. So if some is the same and some is different. It's neither. It's not even or odd. It has to either all be the same or all be different. But don't try to force it. Just see what happens. If you're like, hey, I didn't quite get that. Don't worry, we're gonna do a couple more. I'm not gonna do one example and be like, Godspeed. You know what I mean? Like we're gonna do a few of them. 
So we're going to plug in negative x. Everywhere that there was an x, you're going to put a negative x and give it a hug. So negative x to the 6 means that, oh, good, positive. And how, what, instead of writing out all these x's, what's an easy way you can know that it's going to turn positive? Even it's going to be positive, OK? So this is going to be negative 3, and then this part turns positive x squared. So that's what we got. Again, don't try to force it. Just see what happens. Then you compare. Here's what we started with. Here's what we got. What do you notice? It's the same thing. That means even. If you get the exact same thing you started with, it's even. Opposite is odd. So again, you're going to plug in negative x everywhere that there was an x. You're going to put a negative x and give them all a hug. So negative x to the ninth. Imagine these six that I wrote out, but with three more. OK. Since 9 is odd, that's going to turn negative. This whole term will then be negative. Don't write this. This is the common mistake that I get is people write that. I have to mark that wrong because unfortunately that means or subtract x to the ninth. Where should the negative go? Perfect. In front, negative 4x to the ninth. And then this is plus negative x. So we can just put negative x, yeah, minus x. I'm not going to yank you in the hallway and make you have a verbal exam in here, okay? So now you compare. The first term is what? Opposite. Second term is also opposite. Opposite means odd. All right, and we'll just try one more of these. Again, plug in negative x everywhere that there was an x. You're going to put a negative x. Give them a hug. I made this one the exact same as number three. I just changed one little thing. Should be in a backpack. Because again, the common misconception is people see that nine. They're like, oh, that nine is odd. And then it's x to the first. One is odd. This must be odd. But what did I change about this one? I threw a two in there and just watch what happened. This will be negative four x to the ninth, just like we did over here, minus x plus two. Right, because when you go to compare, this term's opposite, this term's opposite, but the plus two is the same, so it's going to be neither. So you can't decide ahead of time, always work it out. Okay, and I make them all worth two points. It's a point for the work and then a point for stating the even or odd or even. Now these ones, we're just gonna look at them. That's it, these, these are really no work, okay? Symmetry to the y-axis or symmetry to the origin. So what do you think about this first one? Yep, yeah, y-axis, do you see that there? So it is even, literally that's it. How about this one? It looks like the little dipper. Yeah, there's no symmetry there, neither. And then this one's odd. What's in the first quadrant gets reflected down to the third quadrant. So that one's odd. Now, these ones I didn't draw a graph. I want you to imagine them. Do you have an imagination? Yeah. You all had a childhood. Good. OK. You're going to, oh, question? Yeah, let me pause this a second. All right, you're going to have to imagine these ones, the parent functions. They have not been moved or stretched or shrunk or, or anything else. No reflections. Just think of the parent function. Constant. Even, odd, or neither. Even. Good. It's like one of the most boring graphs ever, though. All right, how about linear? Oh, good. You guys have good imaginations. <laughs> Whenever I write odd, it just looks like three circles. I don't, like, I don't know. I need to do better. Quadratic. Again, it hasn't been moved. Even. Perfect. Square root. It would be neither. Cubic. Odd. So cube root is also odd. Just like turn one side. Absolute value, even. 
Rational is that one that's kind of like a bow tie or like an hourglass? That's odd. What's in the first quadrant goes down to the third. Exponential is a swoop. Neither. And logarithmic. Neither. Everyone hates that graph. I feel so bad for logarithmic. Poor logarithmic. I get why everyone doesn't like that one though. It's like Okay, these ones on the back, um, I'm probably gonna just do, well, you know what? Nine through 13 is really largely the same as 14 through 18. And I want us to have some time at the end. So I'm gonna just do these ones. I'll fill these in and put it on Schoology. It'll be there for you. This is literally just evaluating without a calculator. That's all it is. You're just plugging into a function, okay? So here's the function we're gonna use for all of these. F of negative three. You're just gonna input negative three, see what you get back out. So wherever there's an X, you're gonna put a negative three and give it a hug. But Miss Cole, I can do it in my head. Write it anyway, because if you make a mistake, I can't give you partial. I can't grade what happened inside your brain. I can only grade what's written on the paper, so write it down. Now we'll use our brain. Negative three squared. Good, nine times two, 18 minus four, 14. That means that the point negative three comma 14 resides on that graph. I didn't make you graph it, but that point's on me. Did you say word? Oh, good. My husband says word to me all the time, and I'm just like, shh. All right, so plug in five, give it a hug, and then use your brain. But Ms. Cole, I can just do it in my head. Well, that's a, that's a risk, you know? If you get the right answer, fine, but if it's wrong, then I can't help you out. Five squared, 25, double it, 50 minus four, 46, but I get people that'll write 43 just because it happens because we're human, you know what I mean? So write the word. This is plugging in negative X. That's cool, isn't that what we just did on the other side of the paper? Sure is. All right, wherever there's an X, you're gonna put a negative X. I didn't ask you if it's even odd or neither, but we'd be able to answer that. Let's see, negative X squared. Yeah, it'll be positive or negative, let's go there. Good, positive, so 2x squared minus four. And so it would be even. Um, I didn't ask you that. But. Where's this three? Outside, you are just going to multiply this whole thing by three. That is literally it. You just take the whole thing and multiply it by three. Now that means you have to distribute, but you're just tripling everything. So that would be six x squared, Minus 12, very good. Disclaimer, like some fine print. This last one's gonna be a couple of steps of work. Just try to write a little bit smaller if you're a large writer, okay? We're gonna input X minus six into the function. Watch me write the first step, okay? It's gonna be two. Now it's X minus six squared, but don't write that. You wanna just go ahead and write the X minus six twice because that's what squared means. I call it a twin when that happens. So squared means you're gonna multiply it by itself. Just go ahead and write it twice. And then the minus four is like, hey, wait for me. Now I call this foil. Has anyone ever had their teachers that like first outside and that doesn't matter. However you do it to get the right answer is fine. It's just a way to stay organized, okay? So that two is you gonna just hold on and I'll walk you through it. Ready? The first, X times X. X squared, perfect. Now do the outsides and insides together because they'll go together. The outsides are minus six X. The insides are minus six X. Careful, what will that be together? It's not zero. Negative 12, if you owe someone $6 and then you owe them six more dollars, you're a freeloader, but you now owe them $12, okay? So minus 12 X and then negative, oh, I heard somebody say it already. Negative six times negative six is positive 36, perfect. Foil, first outside, inside, last. We will do that a lot. That will get like really put into your brain. All right, what next? We're almost there. What do we do with this two? Distribute. Whoever said he's a factor, if you factor that, you will undo what we just did. Like you'll go backwards with that. No, but that's good vocabulary. So I'm glad we're talking about that. All right, distributing the two, I'm gonna move down here because of the hole in the paper. I'm gonna kind of like skip that line. 2x squared minus 24x 
Now, two times 36, what would it be? 72, but then you have to subtract four. So 72 minus four, 68. Sorry about the hole in the paper. And again, nine through 15, um, or sorry, nine through 13 is the same kind of thing. I'll fill those in before I post them if you wanna do it for extra practice. Lastly, is evaluating these using a graph. There is no work to this, so you will have to watch, okay? Because if you look away, you will miss it because I'm literally just gonna point to it and go, there's the answer, which is cool, but if you look away, you're gonna miss it, okay, so watch. F of negative five, let me zoom way in. I'm gonna five negative five on the X axis, look, there it is, and just go to where that hits the graph. My answer is four, do you see that? That is, I, I kid you not, that's it. But be careful because you don't want to miss the easy ones. Do you, know, do you ever get like a test back and you like miss the easy one? You're like, ah, you know. Oh, deep sigh. All right, f of negative two. So find negative two on the x-axis. Where does that hit the graph? And then where is that on the y-axis? Negative two. And you can't be like, oh, well, what if there's two different choices? Because that won't pass the vertical line test. Good, we'll get there. All right, f of three would be what? Negative two? F of four is a little tricky. It's where the actual point is, not the whole. So it would be one. And then f of seven is four. 